QNA Random Selection No. 15 The nurse enters a two-year-old child's hospital room in order to administer an oral medication. When the child is asked if he is ready to take his medicine, he immediately says, no. What would be the most appropriate next action? A. Uh, leave the room and return five minutes later and get the medicine. B. Explain to the child that the medicine must be taken now. C. Give the medication to the father and ask him to give it. D. Mix the medication with ice cream or applesauce. 1A. Leave the room and return five minutes later and give the medicine. Since the nurse gave the child a choice about taking the medication, the nurse must comply with the child's response in order to build or maintain trust. Since toddlers do not have an accurate sense of time, leaving the room and coming back later is another episode to the toddler. 2. During the evaluation phase for a client, the nurse should focus on a. All finding of physical and psychosocial stressors of the client and in the family. b. The client status, progress toward goal achievement, and ongoing reevaluation. c. Setting short and long-term goals to ensure continuity of care from hospital to home. d. Select interventions that are measurable and achievable within selected timeframes. 2b. The client status, progress toward goal achievement, and ongoing reevaluation. The evaluation step of the nursing process focuses on the client status, progress toward goal achievement, and ongoing reevaluation of the plan of care. The other possible answers focus on other steps of the nursing process. 3. The nurse is providing instructions to a new mother on the proper techniques for breastfeeding her infant. Which statement by the mother indicates the need for additional instruction? A. I should position my baby completely facing me with my baby's mouth in front of my nipple. B. The baby should latch onto the nipple and areola areas. C. There may be times that I will need to manually express milk. D. I can switch to a bottle if I need to take a break from breastfeeding. 3D. Babies adapt more quickly to the breast when they are not confused about what is put into their mouths and its purpose. Artificial nipples do not lengthen and compress the way the human nipples, areola, do. The use of an artificial nipple weakens the baby's suck as the baby decreases the sucking pressure to slow fluid flow. Babies should not be given a bottle during the learning stage of breastfeeding. 4. The nurse is planning to give a 3-year-old child oral digoxin. Which of the following is the best approach by the nurse? A. Do you want to take this pretty red medicine? B. You will feel better if you take your medicine. C. This is your medicine, and you must take it all right now. D. Would you like to take your medicine from a spoon or a cup? For D. At three years of age, a child often feels a loss of control when hospitalized. Giving a choice about how to take the medicine will allow the child to express an opinion and have some control. 5. If four-year-old child is recovering from chickenpox, varicella. The parents would like to have the child return to daycare as soon as possible. In order to ensure that the illness is no longer communicable, what should the nurse assess for in this child? A. Uh, all lesions crusted. B. Elevated temperature. C. Rhinorrhea and coryza. D. Presence of vesicles. 5a. All lesions crusted. The rash begins as a macule, with fever, and progresses to a vesicle that breaks open and then crusts over. When all lesions are crusted, the child is no longer in a communicable stage. 6. The nurse is performing an assessment on a child with severe airway obstruction. Which finding would the nurse anticipate? A. Retractions in the intercostal tissues of the thorax. B. Chest pain aggravated by respiratory movement. C. Cyanosis and modeling of the skin. D. Rapid, shallow respirations. 6a. Retractions in the intercostal tissues of the thorax. Slight intercostal retractions are normal. However, in disease states, especially in severe airway obstruction, retractions become extreme. 7. A nurse is assigned to a client who is newly admitted for treatment of a frontal lobe brain tumor. 
which history offered by the family members would be recognized by the nurse as associated with the diagnosis and communicated to the provider. Eh, my partner's breathing rate is usually below 12. B, I find the mood swings and the change from a calm person to being angry all the time hard to deal with. C, it seems our sex life is non-existent over the past six months. D, in the morning and evening, I hear complaints that reading is next to impossible from blurred print. 7b, the frontal lobe of the brain controls effect, judgment and emotions. Dysfunction in this area results in findings such as emotional ability, changes in personality, inattentiveness, flat effect and inappropriate behavior. 8. A client is receiving nitroprusside 4 for the treatment of acute heart failure with pulmonary edema. What diagnostic lab value should the nurse monitor when a client is receiving this medication? A. Potassium level. B. Arterial blood gases. C. Blood urea nitrogen. D. Thiocyanate. 8. D. Thiocyanate levels rise with the metabolism if nitroprusside is taken and this can cause cyanide toxicity. Thiocyanate should not be over 1 millimole slash liter. 9. A home health nurse is caring for a client with a pressure sore that is red, with serous drainage, is 2 inches in diameter with loss of subcutaneous tissue. The appropriate dressing for this wound is a. Transparent film dressing b. Wet dressing with debridement granules C. Wet to dry with hydrogen peroxide. D. Moist saline dressing. 9. D. This wound is a stage 3 pressure ulcer. The wound is red, granulation tissue, and does not require debridement. The wound must be protected for granulation tissue to proliferate. A moist dressing allows epithelial tissues to migrate more rapidly. 10. The school nurse suspects that a third-grade child might have Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD. Prior to referring the child for further evaluation, the nurse should a. Observe the child's behavior on at least two occasions. b. Consult with the teacher about how to control impulsivity. c. Compile a history of behavior patterns and developmental accomplishments. D. Compare the child's behavior with classic signs and symptoms. 10. C. A complete behavioral and developmental history plays an important role in determining the diagnosis. 11. A client is admitted with a diagnosis of hepatitis B. In reviewing the initial laboratory results, the nurse would expect to find elevation in which of the following values? A. Blood urea nitrogen. B. Acid phosphatase. C. Bilirubin. D. Sedimentation rate. 11. C. Bilirubin. In the laboratory data provided, the only elevated level expected is bilirubin. Additional liver function tests will confirm the diagnosis. 12. The nurse is assessing a child for clinical manifestations of iron deficiency anemia. Which factor would the nurse recognize as the cause of the findings? A. Decreased cardiac output. B. Tissue hypoxia. C. Cerebral edema. D. Reduced oxygen saturation. 12. B. Tissue hypoxia. When the hemoglobin falls sufficiently to produce clinical manifestations, the findings are directly attributable to tissue hypoxia, resulting from a decrease in the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. 13. A recovering alcoholic asked the nurse, Will it be okay for me to just drink at special family gatherings? Which initial response by the nurse would be best? A. Eh, a recovering person has to be very careful not to lose control, therefore, confine your drinking only to family. Gatherings. B. At your next AA meeting, discuss the possibility of limited drinking with your sponsor. C. A recovering person needs to get in touch with their feelings. Do you want a drink? D. A recovering person cannot return to drinking without starting the addiction process over. 13. D. Recovery requires total abstinence from all drugs. 14. The nurse would expect the cystic fibrosis client to receive supplemental pancreatic enzymes along with a diet.
a. High in carbohydrates and proteins. b. Low in carbohydrates and proteins. c. High in carbohydrates, low in proteins. d. Low in carbohydrates, high in proteins. 14a. High in carbohydrates and proteins. Provide a high-energy diet by increasing carbohydrates, protein and fat, possibly as high as 40%. A favorable response to the supplemental pancreatic enzymes is based on tolerance of fatty foods, decreased stool frequency, absence of steatorrhea, improved appetite and lack of abdominal pain. 15. A Hispanic client in the postpartum period refuses the hospital food because it is cold. The best initial action by the nurse is to eh, have the unlicensed assistive personnel, UAP, reheat the food if the client wishes. B. Ask the client what foods are acceptable or are unacceptable. C. Encourage her to eat for healing and strength. D. Schedule the dietitian to meet with the client as soon as possible. 15b. Ask the client what foods are acceptable or are unacceptable. Many Hispanic women subscribe to the balance of hot and cold foods in the postpartum period. What defines cold can best be explained by the client or family. 16. The nurse is assigned to a client who has heart failure. During the morning rounds the nurse sees the client develop sudden anxiety, diaphoresis and dyspnea. The nurse auscultates, crackles bilaterally. Which nursing intervention should be performed first? A. Take the client's vital signs. B. Place the client in a sitting position with legs dangling. C. Contact the healthcare provider. D. Administer the PRN anti-anxiety agent. 16b. Dot place the client in a sitting position with legs dangling to pull the blood in the legs. This helps to diminish venous return to the heart and minimize the pulmonary edema. The result will enhance the client's ability to breathe. The next actions would be to contact the heath care provider, then take the vital signs, and then the administration of the anti-anxiety agent. 17. Based on principles of teaching and learning, what is the best initial approach to pre-op teaching for a client scheduled for coronary artery bypass? A. Touring the coronary intensive unit. B. Mailing a videotape to the home. C. Assessing the client's learning style. D. Administering a written pretest. 17c. Assessing the client's learning style. As with any anticipatory teaching, assess the client's level of knowledge and learning style first. 18. In evaluating the growth of a 12-month-old child, which of these findings would the nurse expect to be present in the infant? A. Increased 10% in height. B. Two deciduous teeth. C. Tripled the birth weight. D. Head chest circumference. 18 C. Tripled the birth weight. The infant usually triples his birth weight by the end of the first year of life. Height usually increases by 50% from birth length. A 12-month-old child should have approximately 6 teeth. Estimate number of teeth by subtracting 6 from age in months, i.e. 12 to 6 equals 6. By 12 months of age, head and chest circumferences are approximately equal. 19. A nurse is doing preconception counseling with a woman who is planning a pregnancy. Which of the following statements suggests that the client understands the connection between alcohol consumption and fetal alcohol syndrome? A. I understand that a glass of wine with dinner is healthy. B. Beer is not really hard alcohol, so I guess I can drink some. C. If I drink, my baby may be harmed before I know I am pregnant. D. Drinking with meals reduces the effects of alcohol. 19. C. Alcohol has the greatest teratogenic effect during organogenesis, in the first weeks of pregnancy. Therefore women considering a pregnancy should not drink. 20. In planning care for a child diagnosed with minimal change nephrotic syndrome, the nurse should understand the relationship between edema formation and a. Increased retention of albumin in the vascular system. b. Decreased colloidal osmotic pressure in the capillaries. 
c. Fluids shift from interstitial spaces into the vascular space. d. Reduced tubular reabsorption of sodium and water. 20b. Decreased colloidal osmotic pressure in the capillaries. The increased glomerular permeability to protein causes a decrease in serum albumin, which results in decreased colloidal osmotic pressure.